it's time to calculate the volume of another cone and I've got a problem here for you. We've got here that the radius of this cone is seven centimeters and the length of this uh, side of the cone is 25 centimeters. We want to calculate the volume. And the, the trick about this one is we don't know the actual height of the cone. The actual height is the vertical distance uh, between the base down here, the circle on the base, and the top or this peak or the point of the cone up here. We know this side of the cone, which is known as the slant height. The problem is when we're given the when we're using the formula for calculating the volume of a cone, we know that the volume is equal to one third times the area of the base. The base is a circle, so the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared times the height. And when we're using the height here, the height is meant as this number right here, which we'll call h right there. It is not the slant height. So before we can use this formula to calculate the volume of the cone, we need to actually calculate what this height is. You can't guess, you can't estimate, you should calculate it. And it really is not that difficult because this height meets the uh, base down here forming a right angle. So what we really have is we have a right triangle formed right here where the a height is maybe we can call that A. The radius down here is another leg. A and B are the legs of this right triangle and the hypotenuse is C. The hypotenuse is always the side directly across from the right angle. So that's side C. And the two sides of that triangle that meet at the right angle are the legs, and those are sides A and B. So before we can calculate the volume, we need to calculate what the height is. To calculate the height, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is what you always use when you're dealing with right triangles and one side is missing. What does the Pythagorean theorem say? It says that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's figure, what this, figure out what this is. a squared, we don't know what it is, but we know this, all we know is a squared has a length of h. So we'll just say h squared, the height of this cone squared plus b the radius is 7 7 squared is equal to c squared this is the uh, slant height the outside edge of this cone the slant height is 25 squared and now we can calculate it we can calculate what h is going to be so first let's square the numbers that we know still don't know h, but 7 squared, 7 times 7 is 49, 25 squared, 25 times 25, let's use my calculator here, 25, I better turn it on first, 25 squared, or 25 times 25 equals 625, 625. Now we want to still figure out what h is, so we have to get h by itself, so we will go minus 49 from this side, so that those will cancel, but if we subtract 49 from this side, we'd better subtract 49 from this side, and we are left with h squared is equal to, and if you can't do that in your head, we can just simply do 625 minus 49 is equal to 576. 576. And now we want to figure out what h is still. We know h squared is equal to 576, but let's figure out what h is. So h is going to be equal to the square root of 576 
And when we do that in our calculators, if I just do the square root of 576, we get 24. So in this case, that square root works out perfectly. The square root of 576 is 24, and this is measured in centimeters. So now, all of this work that we've done so far, all of this that we've done so far is just getting us what that slant, I'm sorry, what the actual height there, the height of our cone is 24. At this point, we're ready to use our, finally ready to use our volume formula that we started with. The volume of a cone is equal to one-third times pi times the radius squared times the height. And now, for height, we're not going to use 25. We're going to use the, that's our slant height. We're going to use our actual height of 24. So, Let's write down our formula then. Volume is equal to one third times pi times the radius squared. The radius is seven, seven squared times the height, which we just calculated to be 24. Let's punch that into our calculators, see what the answer is, and we are done. So, how do you enter one-third into your calculator? Different calculators handle fractions differently. The way I like to do that is treat that as a little division problem. One-third is really equal to one divided by three. So one divided by three times pi. You can use 3.14 as an approximation for pi, or most calculators will have a pi key. And mine is right here, which you probably can't see, but you'll just trust me that right there is your pi key. So it's 1 divided by 3 times pi times 7 squared times 24 equals, and here I get 1,231.5, and so I'll round that to the nearest tenth, and I can now just write that the volume is going to be approximately equal to 1,231.5 and all of these lengths were measured in centimeters so volume is going to be in centimeters cubed, cubic centimeters so there's our final answer. So that was kind of a long problem but let me just recap what we did. We wanted to get the volume of the cone the problem gave us the radius of the cone and the slant height of the cone. But when we're using our volume formula, we don't want the slant height, we want this, the actual height of the cone. To do that, we had to use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we plugged in our numbers into the Pythagorean theorem, squared them, subtracted them, and found that the actual height of the cone is 24 centimeters. Then that is the number that we could plug into our formula. So the volume is equal to one third times pi times the radius squared, which was seven squared, times the actual height, not the slant height, which was 24. Punch all those into our calculator and we end up with an answer of approximately 1,231.5. So that is what you'll do to calculate the volume of a cone when given the slant height rather than the regular height.